Hello, Illumina community. I'm Imani Bethel, a field application scientist. And I'm Tim Gilmartin, also a field application scientist. Many next generation sequencing applications require some level of DNA amplification, most commonly via polymerase chain reaction, or PCR. PCR amplification creates an opportunity for contamination, one of the most problematic sources of error in biological experimentation. Contamination can arise from simply transferring a small amount of one sample into another, or it can be traced to previously amplified material, making its way into the next batch of samples to be amplified. In either case, contamination can have a major impact on the project data. If samples used in a next generation sequencing library preparation are contaminated, this can lead to drastically increased background noise in the data and even lead to false discoveries. Preventing contamination is vital to generating reproducible and impactful data. And today, we will examine the best practices for minimizing the potential for contamination in your lab. Preventing contamination ideally starts with the layout of the lab. If you are performing PCR amplification, establish two separate areas. Area 1, used for sample handling before PCR processing, is referred to as pre-PCR. Area 2, used for sample handling after PCR processing, is referred to as post-PCR. If possible, use two separate rooms for your pre- and post-PCR areas, ensuring physical separation of post-amplification material from the pre-amplification samples. Using two separate rooms also allows for other recommended preventative measures, such as maintaining positive air pressure in the pre-PCR area and adding pass-through airlocks from the pre to the post-PCR area. These steps can greatly reduce the opportunity for previously amplified material to re-enter the pre-PCR area. If using two separate rooms is not an option in your facility, separate benches or areas are acceptable if separate equipment is used for pre- and post-PCR processing, and different personal protective equipment, or PPE, is used in both areas. This would include items such as gloves, lab coats, eye protection, disposable shoe, and boot covers. Also, strict cleaning schedules need to be maintained, all of which we will discuss in greater detail shortly. Basically, the separate areas should be treated as though they are separate rooms. Illumina sequencing and library preparations often require centrifuges, benchtop vortexers, pipetters, tube racks, heat blocks, and numerous other pieces of laboratory equipment. Equipment should not be shared between the pre- and post-PCR areas. Instead, use separate dedicated equipment in the respective pre- and post-PCR areas, including refrigerators and freezers. One of the best ways to prevent contamination during library preparation is to only process in one direction, from pre-PCR to post-PCR. This unidirectional workflow should prevent the potential sources of contamination from returning to the pre-PCR area. These potential sources include tubes, racks, pipetters, pipette tips, and other laboratory equipment that may contain amplified templates. Also, gloves, lab coats, or other PPE that have been used in the post-PCR area. Be sure to put on fresh gloves when entering the pre-PCR area and change gloves frequently. Maintain dedicated sets of PPE for the pre- and post-PCR areas. Store these PPE sets separately and clean regularly. Cleaning prevents contamination from remaining on PPE and being introduced elsewhere. Ideally, a lab member who has worked in post-PCR should not return to pre-PCR on the same day. If a lab member must return to pre-PCR after working in post-PCR, carefully put on fresh PPE and thoroughly clean all areas in pre-PCR after you return. Additionally, use dedicated dressing areas near the entrance and exits of both the pre- and post-PCR areas where PPE can be applied or removed before entering or exiting either area. Sort and aliquot all reagents shared between pre-PCR and post-PCR in the pre-PCR area. Carry post-PCR reagents to the post-PCR area after they have been sorted in the pre-PCR area. It's often the simplest details that have the biggest impact. 
and that's definitely the case with pipetting. To avoid potential contamination while pipetting, make sure the tip is securely seated on the pipetter. Hold the pipetter vertically and go slow. Make sure you have aspirated the correct volume. Check the outside of the tip for unexpected drops of liquid and hold the pipetter at a 20 to 45 degree angle to achieve the optimal flow of liquid out of the tip and avoid splashing. Here is an online video for more on proper pipetting. Even if you're using perfect pipetting technique, sample to sample contamination can still occur due to aerosols. An efficient way to combat aerosol contamination is to use aerosol and liquid resistant pipette tips or barrier tips. These types of tips commonly use a self-sealing filter tip to prevent liquids or aerosols from contacting the pipetter. Avoid spilling or splashing samples by carefully opening or closing tubes or plates. Spin down tubes or plates containing samples to make sure that all sample volumes are collected at the bottom of the well. When working with Illumina Library Preparation Kits, be sure to change tips between each sample when adding or transferring samples or reagent master mixes. Change tips between each row and column when adding index adapters. Remove unused index adapter tubes from the working area. Open only one index adapter tube at a time to prevent misplacing caps. Use a fresh new cap to reseal the index adapter tubes. Follow best practices listed in the Illumina Reference Guide for your application. Scheduled routine cleaning with a 10% bleach or approximately 0.5% sodium hypochlorite is highly recommended to prevent contamination. Typically this occurs on a daily and weekly basis with a thorough cleaning occurring weekly. Also, cleaning your work area before starting a procedure can proactively remove any contamination in the area. Areas to target include pipetters, tube racks, bench tops and other utilized surfaces, control panels for heat blocks, centrifuges, or vortexers. Handles for freezers, refrigerators, ovens, or often used drawers or cabinets. Computer mice and keyboards. Any area that is commonly touched during normal lab operations, often referred to as hotspots. Solutions with low concentrations of bleach can lose potency quickly and variably based on your specific lab environment. For best results, make fresh bleach solution daily from a higher concentrated stock. Also, if the surface is bleach resistant, wipe it down and then allow 10 to 15 minutes before using a paper towel dampened with water or 70% ethanol to remove the residual bleach. It is highly recommended to include a no-template control, or NTC, in experiments using amplification. By including a sample as a no-template control, we can identify contamination in the samples, reagents, or laboratory environment if the NTC generates amplified products. Furthermore, tracking the frequency of contamination can also assist in identifying a root cause of the contamination or preventing an increase in the rate of occurrence. Here's a grid of DNA sequencing applications available on the Illumina website. There are over 100 published methods on the website with similar amounts available for RNA-Seq. A majority of these applications all share a common feature. They require some flavor of PCR amplification. Using the best practices we've highlighted in this video can help you avoid contamination in your lab, ensuring greater processing efficiency and robust data. Be sure to Set up your lab to use unidirectional flow, separate lab equipment and PPE. Focus on good lab technique when using pipetting, handling samples, and using index adapters. Clean areas frequently and monitor performance with an NTC. Following these tips will help prevent contamination in your lab and the headaches that come with it. Happy sequencing, and as always, thanks for being part of the Illumina community.